Oh, I fucked that up. All right, part two. All right, we'll finish up with Hong Kong there. I could, I could do a whole lecture on that. Xinjiang. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. There was that one vice girl. She got into Xinjiang, did a cool couple reports about her about her about uh Xinjiang she was the same one who she 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 covered Hong Kong as well she's good she got in um Canadian Globe and Mail journalist what's his name Nathan Vander or whatever he got pinched nailed in in uh, Xinjiang and I guess some of the shrills they've they've gone to Xinjiang oh yeah yeah Xinjiang's great but those those shills they're they're more like travel bloggers not amateur Historians wanna be Wen Hua Li Shi Yeah Zhong Tong But um I've been to Xinjiang twice, once in two thousand two on my second time to China. That was my big epic three and a half month backpacking trip and that was awesome. And uh over the years, I tried to go back, and I, I knew if I was going to go to Xinjiang, I probably wouldn't want to leave. I probably just want to stay there and work at uh, oh, freaking some university there, like Urumuchi, Urumuchi, Dashui. Yeah, yeah, that'd be hilarious. But um, yeah, and I always such a big place, and I know if I was going to go back, I'd have to spend all summer there, not just a week or two. But I have some of my favorite places in Gansu province as well, so it's Xinjiang is quite far. But, but um, I went to Turpan, complete, completely bypassed Urumuchi. I had no desire to go there, and still, even to this day, because from all I've heard, it's a typical Chinese city. It's you got your Zongshan Lu, your Zongshan Guangyan, Guangyar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's, and then um, I spent about five days, maybe a week in Kashgar, and that was awesome. That was really cool. I really enjoyed that. But then over the years, seeing how Kashgar has changed, I don't think I'd want to go back. It's it's gone are the the mud the mud um, houses and shacks and now these new skyscrapers. And rightfully so. It's it was a poor place there. It, it kind of reminded me. I hadn't been to Afghanistan yet, but I, 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 when I got to Xinjiang, I'm thinking, wow, this is, I'm gonna, this is what Afghanistan's going to look like. So, um, And it wasn't until about five, four or five years ago, I finally went back to um, Turpan. Yeah, I had some time, because I have one of my favorite places in Dunhuan. I could live there, I love that place, and want to spend more time in Dunhuan than than um, traveling around in Xinjiang, because it's, yeah, with the flights, it's fine and all, but still, the trains and the buses, it's it's like, this is like Canada here, it's like a thousand kilometers to go anywhere, so it's, yeah. So when I went back to Turpan, yeah, the Turpan Hotel, which I'd stayed at and everything, the whole city is completely, I wouldn't say it's completely rec unrecognizable, but I didn't remember, because it had been... 15, 16, I don't know how many years since I'd been, 17 years since I'd been back, 15, 16, oh yeah. But I was really quite privileged to have one of my uh, Uyghur students heard, heard, or well, followed me on uh, WeChat and heard that I was going, going to Turpan. He's like, hey, teacher Chris, um, I'm from Turpan. Um, why don't you um, stay with my family <laughs> when, when you get there, all right? It's, um, yeah, you can hook up with my brother, and he'll show you around, and yeah, what do you think? And I'm just like, nice, yes, all right, <laughs> yeah, nice. So I had a great time, a great time with the family there. I helped with the grape harvest. Um, I was mistaken as Uyghur multiple times. I still got to dig up those photos as well. I have some photos and videos on my WeChat. I got to dig up for those to prove it. And... Um, yeah, I only know very few words in Uyghur, Uyghur, <laughs> Xinjianghua, whatever. But um, um, my friends, my students, friends, students, uh, parents couldn't speak Mandarin at all, so we had to rely on the, the little brother to help speak. And then often they had to call the son 
to, to translate for me as well because it was a communication barrier. But uh, they could understand me, which is hilarious, you know, with my EDRDR Zhongwen, so it was fine. They could understand me, I just couldn't understand them as much. Well, of course, Dui, sure, yeah, Trifan, it was fine, but. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I knew that I wanted to come back again because I was winding up my time in China. And I'd, you know, saw the family, saw the farm. Yeah, all right, I, how about I plant a little seed here, a little root? And I asked them, like, hey, c can I come back next year and stay longer? I don't know, like a week or two. Hey, um, why don't you uh, send me to the farm? I can become a Sha Gang. Yeah, I'd love it. Oh, yeah, send me to the farm for a couple of weeks. Oh, I'll have, no oh, two weeks volunteering on a grape farm. That's, that's, people would pay for that shit, you know. Wow, so. But then, um, yeah, they told me through the sun. Um, they're like, no, because of security regulations, no foreigners are allowed to stay at our residence anymore. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what the hell? I, only in China have I heard that. Even in Iran, I didn't get that shit in Iran. And uh, Malaysia, other countries. In other countries, Japan, I don't know. Sorry, you cannot stay with us. The government won't allow it. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. I can't. That's not a free world. All right, so. I, uh, yeah, I wonder if any of those ghoulies can uh, refute that, huh? Fanbo nagahuita. Angry. So, yeah, with Xinjiang, um, people call it genocide in Xinjiang. It's more like, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ugh. Oh, Short-term memory loss. Eugenics, yeah, social eugenics is what's happening. Oh, yeah. I think I mentioned it before in a podcast, which you, I think, Lenny, you were watching. That's when I first saw you or met you on the, on the YouTube when I was saying, um, about, pause, was I check my notes? Ah, fuck it, anyways, this just did not prepare for this, obviously. Um, as for Taiwan, that's, that's, uh, never been, well, been once, 24 hour, uh, an hour layover, does not count. So that's, that's, uh, ask, uh, the old, uh, hand job there. <laughs> uh, Lewis about that, Yang Guizhi, uh, yeah, that's, that's his domain, that's his realm. Uh, I can't, I can't. I want to, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Besides, I only have a few more minutes left on this shit. Okay, question three. Present the point of view Hong Kong protesters. Yeah, I, I kind of did myself already. Yeah, I was so angry. I guess back to Hong Kong. I remember watching this, um, I must have been two young European couple, and they were, they were right by the um, Sim Sa Choi Park there. The name of the dam park there, Kowloon Park. And um, they're asking this one activist, hey, what's going on here? And the, and the guy just spews out in English, his Hong Kong accent in English, like, these mainlanders, they're so dirty. They spit everywhere. They come, they steal our women. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, oh, man, it was hilarious. I was like, yeah, I've heard it all before, and um. Yeah, it's, once again, did not engage with any foreigners there, or foreigners or protesters there. Taiwanese independent supporters, ah. Uyghur dissidents. When well, we want to speak of Uyghur dissidents, yeah, the Xinj uh, my Uyghur friends there, those people I will protect. I will not reveal their names, locations, anything, because they'll get punished. You know, that's, it's, that's, that's how serious things are there. But back to um, the Hong Kong dissident protesters. Yeah, there was a little, little, little Joshua Wong there. I'll be watching him as his career grows over the years. Yeah. Yeah, like he would, I guess he wasn't doing the shit in Canada. He might get fined or 
community service or thrown in jail for a night or two, but, but most likely the charges would be dropped because of police tampering, you know, like, yeah, poor kid, and poor, and poor all the other ones too. And um, I did have the honor of meeting um, Long Hair, Long Hwak, yeah, briefly by chance in a, in a near um, Lan Kwai Fong years ago. And I heard he was stabbed not too long ago. Yeah, I was just out in the street like he usually does, out in the street, and some guy just comes up and stabs him right in the ass or something like that. It's happened to a lot, a lot of people like that. So, oh yeah, the protesters. So, hopefully with Joshua Wong, Agnes, and a few others, a few others, many others, including including all the the pan-pro-democrats who refuse to <laughs> pledge allegiance to Xi Jinping. I... Wow. Hey, Canada's always... The, we're, we're, we're accepting a lot of Afghani refugees. What's a few more Chinese intellects? Yeah, but hopefully... They're, 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 they're Hong Kongers by heart, and I think they're going to stay there. And it's still a big place. Still a big place in Hong Kong. You can get far away into the jungles... Never have to learn Mandarin, never have to speak English, just speak your old school Guangdonghua and live your life comfortably in the jungles there. That's crazy. Well, I only have a few more minutes left on my timer here. Has ever challenged any of the dragon claims of the Chinese Communist Party? Well, these, these people, they can't even do pro pro-Chinese propaganda very well. They don't even know their own history, their culture. Huh? I see some of the some of the travel vloggers, they're they're starting to learn Chinese and engage in that way, but mm, you know, you know, I've I've done some pretty extensive studies and wanna be Wu Mao Dang, but even what they're doing is it is definitely shameless. I was I was trying to watch some of these videos. I'm not gonna name names, alright, but um well I could. Like a, we'll live debate any time you want, well, civilly, but, but, um, ah, the hell was I ranting about that? Pause. Well, I hope some of them really step it up here. It's, uh, yeah, but it's fun. It is certainly fun. It's just like I was mentioning earlier today or yesterday, it's been a long day. Now, back in the day, we used to call it the Chin Blogosphere, all the comments section. That was where it was fun. Now it's all videos and chats and TikToks and emojis and all that shit. But, you know, back in the old day, it was typing and commenting. So, I really hope some of these shills can really step it up and go a bit shameless here. Oh yes, one more thing. I have to research this up. Here's a great recommendation, and uh, this is the kind of shilling that we need. Where the hell are my C4 boys? All right, this camera. Yeah, there it is. Oh God, I haven't seen these dudes in a while. China Plus, China Radio International, the C4 show. How are those boys doing? I, God, it was back. What, oh fifteen, oh four. <laughs> the two British guys are hilarious. Like. I guess the one skinny dude might still be around. I don't know. Those guys were cool. And I think we need to see more. Th those guys, yeah, they were shrill, shills, but they, they, were, they kept it real. And that was cool. And um, they had no problem taking one on the chin. And I, and I knew on some levels that uh, they, were, they, were they were doing some pretty risque stuff. And I knew on some levels that China Radio International were allowing this. They wanted this, like, two, two crazy Lao Wais to go around and make silly videos so so that's what we need to see more of more 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 real shit anywho that is all for me it's gonna take some while for me to upload these videos and um such but looking forward to talking to you again lenny frost toodaloo